You know, sometimes I get comments. People will ask, you know, Josh, I want to take my family camping, but like 1,100 pounds of cargo capacity doesn't cut it. Doesn't anybody make anything with a better cargo rating? Short answer, yeah. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Vicious RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd here in my hometown uh, Coldwater, Michigan store today with the 26BH HL. Either saleable or Wildwood, two different names, one good RV. And other manufacturers take note. You see that like over 3,100 pound cargo carrying capacity on this RV? That is how this is supposed to be done. There are way too many family bunkhouse models out there on a big long tandem axle platform like this that could hold a lot of cargo that can never be loaded because they only have 11 or 1200 pounds of available capacity. This is not one of those. If you've got a family that you actually want to pack all of the things or if you're boondocking and you want to bring a little bit of water with you, God forbid, crazy, I know, this is one that you can actually do that. Now it is a very uh, time-tested floor plan at this point um, where uh, we've got a, a living room super slide you know uh some big windows albeit on the driver's side but at least we do have some good window coverage on this direct entry bathroom door which cuts down on dirty foot traffic through the rv like crazy and a little miniature outdoor camp kitchen uh overlooking the wide stance stability axles which when you factor in the 6500 pound dry weight the wide stance stability axles this might be half ton towable. It's really going to depend on where you're towing, how you're towing, the conditions you're going to see, and the exact capacities of your truck. So it maybe is, maybe isn't half ton towable. Three quarter ton, man, you should be good all day, every day on this thing. Um, this has an enclosed belly that is forced air heated. We have tank heaters. It does not have a roof ladder. It has a camp queen bed. I know those are big deal factors to people. And I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm trying to give you all this information right away. So that those are deal breaker factors and we, we're not gonna spend our time looking at the wrong RV. And if you appreciate how we're sensitive to your time that way, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And uh, if those maybe aren't deal breakers or you wanna see maybe what else this RV has to offer beyond just a good cargo capacity, stay tuned. This is, this is a good family camper right here. All right, so if you were sitting in the super slide dinette looking over toward the door side of the RV, this would kind of be our perspective right here. The RV's six and a half foot tall inside, so that kitchen skylight letting in that extra flood of natural light is something I really welcome. I think it really helps just lighten and brighten everything up. It is extremely neutral. It's like extra medium in here, <laughs> which by the way, is a very fun way to mess with somebody at a, uh, a retail clothing store. Say, excuse me, do you have this garment in extra medium? And they're, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's not on the rack, I can check out back and then leave because um, you're going to be laughing, you know? It's like sending your kid to go get a board stretcher. It's, it's awful, but it's also kind of hilarious. Electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster right there. Notice the heat vent in the cabinet side ducting. You will not see uh, floor ducted heating in these um, hemispheres as Salem calls them or Heritage Glens as we're looking at them in Wildwood today. Now, I want to slide over. You saw the view from the dinette. This is the view from the uh, the sofa right here. And because this has an uh, angled entertainment wall, I think it works pretty well. I think it's better than the 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment centers. And what you're going to see is that you've got bonus storage there by the door, a big pantry, like a second pantry, a closet, and in the bedroom. But if I slide over all the way against the slide wall, it's still not bad. The TV does not pivot but I don't know that it necessarily needs to. I think it does its job pretty darn well. Now, in the uh, the sofa, uh, you've got your choice between a theater seat and a hide-a-bed. We're gonna be looking at the hide-a-bed today. Uh, I, I think, personally, I would go with the theater seat on this one. Not that maybe you necessarily care what I think, but just because I, I feel like this RV has enough sleeping with those uh, big bunks over in the corner and the way that this u dinette can all fold down I, I don't know. I just kind of lean that way so that if it, you are stuck inside on a rainy day, uh, whoever owns the RV, you actually get a nice place to sit down, you know, where the kids, they can lounge on their bunks and their bones are still bendy. It just doesn't bother them the way it bothers you and me, you know. Uh, 13,500 BTU standard air. You can upgrade to a 15,000 BTU 30 amp service standard. You can upgrade to 50 amp service if you are so inclined as well to uh, allow for the ability to add a second air conditioner. Now I failed to ignite the lights in the bunks. My apologies there. What I do like though, is that I can reach them down here. It's so, like as a parent, when it's uh, lights out time, like go to bed time kids, 
I like that I can reach the lights, that I don't have to try to climb up in there all the way at the headboard area there to turn those off and on. You're just going to have to try to teach your kids. Don't reach down here with your toes and kick the switches. Uh, don't do that, please. Both of the bunks have their own USB plugs. The bottom bunk also has a set of household plugs, both in the bunk space as well as down here on the base, although I think that's intended more for the dinette. Um, what I don't see on those bunks is a sticker indicating the weight rating. I believe it's about 300 pounds, but I could be uh, mistaken on that. Now, over toward the bathroom here. One of the nice touches that you're getting here in the laminated Wildwoods, as opposed to the stick and tin Wildwoods, is a porcelain foot flush stool. And if you notice, that is fairly fluffy friendly. That qualifies for the three Fs right there. And actually, you know what I just realized? If you're watching the big game and all the money's on the line because you bet the kids' college tuition, if you look out here, you can still pretty much watch TV. I, It's not ideal, but I do think it qualifies for toilet TV certification. I'm, I'm not sure how high on your priority list that might be there. I love what they did with the shower, though. So we've got a nice rectangular 30 by 36 shower. Good adult size shower. Um, my head will need to be in that skylight at a little bit over six foot tall. So kind of keep that in mind, depending on how big you are. But what I like about it is what they did here is they still have uh, some decent linen space and they put it behind a door. There's a huge trend right now of manufacturers leaving like bathroom storage open. I love the fact that they, uh, they put full drawer coverage in there. Although that open pocket right there, I think would be a perfect place um, for uh, extra rolls of toilet paper. Your primary TP dispenser uh, over here would most definitely, uh, you know, be within reach otherwise. Now, it's a, uh, a pretty simple bathroom arrangement otherwise, but it's effective. I think the shower and the toilet execution is excellent. And we do have a direct entry bathroom door right here. I dislike personally, it's not my favorite, that the main entry door doesn't have a window in it because this RV is severely lacking in door side windows. But anytime you see a solid door like this, if you're curious, you can add a window to that. It's actually not terribly hard. I see people DIY that all the time. There's there's outfit kits to do that. So if the only thing that's stopping you from like buying this RV or pursuing it is just the, um, you know, a window in the door or not a window in the door, give us a call. That is the kind of stuff that we can work out for you. In the bathroom, I don't mind that there's not a window. Here in the living room where I have uh, otherwise extremely limited door side window coverage for me personally that would be something that uh, I would like to see now we've kind of seen you know the living room and the kitchen arrangement let's look at all the other stuff this one can do so let's start with pulling down those blackout roller shades blotting out the sun all those windows open for airflow by the way and you see the uh, the high to bed sleeper sofa over there you may also notice some easy access doors to get under that full true you dinette uh, so that can fold down into a bigger sleeper they saw the open air ladder wall in the windows, making those bunks look and feel nice and large, but you do have a privacy curtain there as well. And like I said, this RV actually has a full, really good dedicated kitchen pantry right next to that large refrigerator. And then next to the door, it's either an additional pantry or kind of like a, um, what do I want to say? Like a little entry door kind of coat closet or something like that. Now, uh, there's some power outlets hidden under the overhead cabinets in the kitchen. Uh, it's got a great space for a wastebasket overall. I think this kitchen is very successful. It doesn't, uh, this arrangement, you know, is very length effective. People go, why didn't they just put the slide over there? Well, the slide can't fit on that side because of the entry door stopping it from happening. Um, otherwise, you know, they could come up with something, but they just have it yet. But uh, if you're going to be spending time outside, you're probably going to be under the awning. I can see people camping in this with the windows pulled all the time, you know personally i do that at my house i don't even like the windows open at my house my wife constantly opens them i constantly close them it's kind of like our little war of the roses <laughs> you may have noticed uh also there was a uh sliding pocket privacy door here for the bedroom uh which is nice now uh looking around up in here up in here i mentioned earlier it's a camp queen that's still true um <laughs> But uh, if you wanted to go with a longer true queen, you could. There is a little bit of a caveat to that I'm going to give you in just a second. I do want to point out how these windows still open for airflow. And if you look real close, the windows here in the bedroom still have the same blackout roller shades that we saw in the living room. There's a lot of manufacturers and brands that will give you cool shades in the living room. And then they don't elsewhere in the RV. I like how they're consistent here. 
Now, the bedroom TV location, if I'm going to be kind of Frank or George or whatever you want, it sucks. I don't know that a lot of people are really putting a TV in this bedroom, so I kind of get it. You could always install a swing arm mount up here for a small screen if you are so inclined. Now, take a look at this. There's actually more bedroom storage than you might think in this. You see the normal two dual hanging towers. I was very impressed to see a flip-up uh, storage access uh, for the uh, the over bed cabinet and it is tall enough that it's not a head banger You see that awesome headboard side pocket stand with household and USB plugs out there That is my personal favorite way for travel trailers to do their bedrooms uh, I, I like to have my phone charger beside me in bed at night That's the perfect spot for it right there and that big bonus closet that hides behind the entry uh, coat closet that right there is that extra kick of storage like some people say man This would be great if it had like a, a closet slide it doesn't need a closet slide because it has a closet built into it. So you're eliminating extra seal points, extra weight, extra cost. I love that arrangement. So what do you think about this thing so far? And now with the slide closed for travel and access, there was this moment where it's like, oh, can I just get through there? Can I just squeeze my fat butt through there? And no, I'm just a little too big to do it. Um, now, my daughter, who's a little smaller, she'd be able to squeeze up into that front bedroom without opening the slide. Maybe to retrieve something in transit, you might find benefit to that. I don't know that that's really necessarily a functional thing to consider, though. Beyond that, um, this is going to have a little bit of what I call two-stage access, where you can get to some things from the front door here, but for the most part on this one, your traveling access will actually come from back at that bathroom door. Which is where we find ourselves right now. So if you came in through uh, the rear bathroom door, which is always going to be accessible because it has the folding traditional steps, you know, sometimes the stable steps on the front door become a problem. This one shouldn't be an issue. So as you see, if you need to get in here, you need to get to the pantry, to the fridge, to the sink, this has super snacktastic travel access. And you know, something to mention real quick is this is a cable slide. And one of the benefits of cable slides is that they don't jut into the underbelly, so not fighting the holding tanks. That's, I don't even know why I mentioned that. The thing that matters right now, context, stupid, is uh, cable slides can be opened partially without screwing them up. So if you did want to scoot that to get to the bedroom for something, you could. But I really don't think that counts for uh, naptastic travel access because you don't really want to leave the slide partially open like that. So what if you do need to snooze on the way? Well, if you can't open the slide, at least you have an accessible pair of these double over double beds right here. Now, that might mean that maybe on a travel stop, uh, in, instead of having one kid per bunk, you got to kind of Sir Mix-a-Lot double up on these things. But, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 an, it's an option. I'm not saying it's ideal, but that might work. And if that's a deal breaker for you, well, I would recommend not purchasing this RV and looking at something else that we might have. Anyway, I just thought it might be kind of cool to show you this thing before and after with the slide closed and then open. So let's start digging in to the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between on the outside now that we've covered the interior. Right on the back wall here, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Yes, walkable roof. No, ladder. Nor do uh, I believe this has ladder prep at this point. What I'm seeing a lot of manufacturers do is add that single prep point for one of those telescopic removable ladders, um, even if they don't include the ladder. Is that something that you would be open to seeing on this RV? Would you, uh, uh, you know, are there people who prefer RVs with no ladders? Are there people out there who'd like to see the telescoping mount? Or would you like to see a fixed mount? Leave me a little comment, let me know. You see right down there, we got our black tank flush and all the water hookups basically. Uh, in what I think is the proper point on the RV, that back rear corner, to me, that is the best place to put your hookups because that's typically, if you're park camping, that's where your hookup power tower and water spigot and everything are going to be uh, located. By the way, I was a little too old before uh, I realized um, uh, that it was a water spigot. I kept thinking that my parents kept saying water bigot, and I'm like, huh, that word has two meanings, huh? And no, it turns out that I just heard them wrong. Anyway, but, but sorry, that's enough about me. We've got a chunk of storage here below the bunks, but you might notice it doesn't pass all the way under the bunks. That's because that's where your furnace is located. So sometimes people look at a bunk model and say, couldn't you rip out the bunks and build an office in it? Not in this one because of the location of that furnace. That, that box will pretty much always be there. Maybe you could work around it. I don't know, but ideally you wouldn't. Something that they did very, very well on this, though, 
is all of your tanks empty out right here. Both of your, your kitchen and your bathroom gray tanks and your black tank, they all dump out right to this one point. Um, the underbelly of this, it is enclosed. It is forced air heated. Uh, it does have holding tank heaters, which is fantastic. But you might notice things like our gate valves are open and exposed. Again, I'm being as fair and candid as I can about all this stuff. Um, Wildwood has not undergone zero degree testing on these, so I can't tell you it's four seasons rated. Um, good extended season camper, but if it's gonna be below freezing, remember that you've got those exposed uh, tank valves right there. To me, this is an awesome early spring to late fall camper here in the Midwest. Now, weather patterns can vary, you know, nationally, obviously. Our windows are tinted. I want to point that out because not everybody does that in this class. And that's one of those things that, uh, you know, I, I try to point out on different RVs when I see them. You might notice though, it is slide awning prepped, which is very cool. Uh, the slide walls are really rough textured. Coachman does a lot of that too. A lot of brands do now, which is nice. And it really grabs that wiper seal. Actually, the double wiper seals very nicely. Now, as I back up here a little bit more, something that they're doing fantastically well is giving us a big, full-size true passer with big baggage doors on both sides. A lot of brands will do a big door over on the camp side and then a little tiny door over here. Well, the problem is, uh, I gotta be able to get to the cargo on both sides of the thing equally. So that's just a nice little ease of use and convenience factor that I'm gonna give them some bonus points for on here. Uh, they use 20 pound propane tanks instead of 30s. What that means is that if it's a Sunday and you run out of propane, you can go to pretty much any gas station and swap it out if you had to. 30 pound tanks will last longer. They're a little heavier to muscle around, but here's what's cool. If you wanted 30 pound tanks on this, all we have to do is change out the tanks, get you a bigger cover and a little longer rod to be able to hold the propane regulator in place effectively. It ain't that hard. So if you're ever looking at an RV that has 20 pound holding tanks, chances are it can be outfitted to uh, to feature uh, 30 pound tanks. Now uh, you see right here, we're not a member of the 751 Key Club. If you don't know what that is, um, a lot, uh, frankly, the vast majority of RVs are built with the exact same um, key lock using the exact same key on outside baggage door compartments. Well, that is not the case here. Uh, so, you know, you've got your own different key and it was a magnet hole back in a slam latch, as you saw. Now, I mentioned this earlier on the inside when we were talking about travel access. These big folding steps, uh, they can be a problem at some uh, storage sites or whatever, or if you're parked in a parking space, you can't always fold those down for traveling access. But remember how the majority of the travel access actually came from the back door on this one. So the folding steps back there are almost always easily, uh, you know, you can get in them, uh, even if you gotta climb a little bit, you could get in those things right there. The bigger handle is kind of nice, giving us something a little more substantial to grab onto. Now this little camp kitchen door, well, it's not so little, it flips right up and it kind of blocks part of the interior kitchen window. So that's one of those things, uh, it, it seems kind of annoying. I don't know that you're just going to leave it open all the time. I think you're going to pop it out when it is grill o'clock over here, or you know, when you're, uh, you're, you're gonna lift that door just long enough to be able to get into dad's medicine cabinet over here, whether you need a bottle of water or maybe a barley pop to get you through a hot afternoon or something like that. Also, Wildwood's very good about this. Dead under the middle of their awning, they put the drunken uncle leash latch so that you can keep your four-legged furry friends in the shade and not melting to death like the Wicked Witch of the West out in the sun. And also, um, if you have one of those dogs that likes to bite at spraying water, make sure you record it and put it on the internet. Because <laughs> it is cute, it is fun, and we all love to see it. Wide stance stability axles right here are one of the factors that is going to help this tow and handle better. Uh, because basically, the best way I can describe it the RV is going to feel and tow like it's shorter than it actually is. The simplest way I can say it is that the RV's length isn't any shorter, but it's going to feel that way. It cheats the wheelbase. Now, let me know what you, uh, you think about this one. I'll also leave you some links in the video description, not only just to check the pricing and availability on this model at any of our given stores, but also to like, what if you're on a little tighter budget? I've got stick and tin versions of this. Do you like Asdell? I've got a laminated version of this from Coachman that also has uh, some Asdell options. Every RV, people say, Josh, which one's the best for a family? I don't know. They're all good for different reasons. And that's why I like to put these videos together to really kind of showcase where they stand out, where they soar, where they fall short a little bit. And I'd love to hear from you now. 
not only what do you think about this in general, but what is your very favorite aspect of it? And what would you change? What is like one thing at least you would change given the opportunity? We'll relay that feedback to the manufacturer. And I can't promise they'll listen, but at least we can say we tried. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.